Hey everybody, back at it again. Been way behind on my mail for the past week and a half or so. So I have a few videos to make. I wanted to make one for a really nice care package I got from Brentwood Sports and Collectibles. Was off YouTube for a few months and has been back recently. One of the things I really like about his videos is he opens a lot of packs from like the mid to late 90s, early 2000s. And as a lot of you know, that's the type of stuff I really love. And that's the type of stuff he sent for the most part. So let's get into some of this. Starting off with some basketball. This is pretty much where my sports collecting started with a lot of this early 90s NBA stuff. Those are the big NBA jam session cards. I had a few of those, but they were always tough to protect because obviously you need the big top loaders for that. And I can never find them. But there you have Greg Anthony and Charles Smith. These are really cool. Bulls versus Knicks card. They had so many great battles back in the day. The NBA overall was so much more competitive around that time. Here's some Patrick Ewing stuff. Any Knicks fan will tell you you can never have too many Patrick Ewing cards. We got one from Fleer. Hoops. This one I didn't have from Tops. Didn't have this one either. Tops rebounding leaders. And I always love this one from Upper Deck. Team checklist card. Nice artwork there. Here's some John Starks. Another great 90s Nick. Didn't have this one from SP. Really like the design on those. Even got foil on the back, which I thought was pretty cool. You got the Upper Deck Jams. Here's some Alan Houston. Another one of the more recent great Nicks. Really was robbed of some years toward the end of his career. Was putting up some really good numbers. Had such a sweet jump shot. There's a nice insert, True Talents. Some Doc Rivers cards. There have been rumors around here that if he doesn't go back to be the coach of the Clippers next year, that the Knicks might be interested. But me personally, I'd like to see Mark Jackson be the next coach of the Knicks. But we'll see what happens. Here's some more kind of random 90s Knicks. You got Trent Tucker, who actually won some championships with the Bulls. Mo Cheeks, more known for being a 76er. Charles Oakley. Tony Campbell. Anthony Bonner. Always oh, loved that 93-94 Ultra. Remember packs of that were like a dollar, dollar fifty, and that always seemed like a lot to me around that time. But that was like a premium product back when it came out. Derek Harper, really underrated guard back in the day. I think he kind of got lost in the shuffle. There were so many good guards around that time, but he was a solid player, good shooter, good passer. Here's a Charles Smith. Always love that photo of him just kind of standing there like whatever. A few more here. I might end up making this a two-parter because it's also a stack of football stuff. Here's some Larry Johnsons, some above the rim shots from upper deck. He's a guy that kind of didn't live up to expectations, was a 20 point per game scorer with Charlotte and came here was more like a 10 to 12 point per game scorer, but kind of settled into that role player position pretty good. I always liked him towards the end where he was coming off the bench, could give you some energy, give you a spark, then obviously knocked down that big four point play in the playoffs. So he'll always be remembered for that. There's another guy that came in here with some high expectations, Chris Childs. They signed him from the New Jersey Nets. He was supposed to be the point guard for the next few years, but ended up splitting a lot of time with Charlie Ward and actually played better when he was in that part-time role. Here's an insert of him, StarQuest. And here's the guy I just mentioned, Charlie Ward. Knicks had a lot of players like him around that time who weren't like ultra talented, but just knew how to play the game. I feel like they've kind of gotten away from that. Just been chasing stars the past decade or so. Here's another guy from around that time, Kurt Thomas. He became one of my favorite Knicks. Again, not really talented, but just a real hard worker. Developed into a solid NBA pro. Stuck around the league for like a decade. Good rebounder. Good mid-range shot. Marcus Camby. 
He actually did have a lot of high expectations coming out of college, drafted by the Raptors, but didn't do much there. Then the Knicks traded for him and developed into a pretty solid player. Not a superstar or anything, but another guy stuck around the league for like a decade or so. Here's a guy that should have stuck around the league longer, Latrell Sprewell. Tremendous talent, but also tremendous attitude. That's what got him traded out of Golden State. Got him traded out of New York. Then I think it kind of got him blackballed from the league. Nobody would sign him. I think he still had a few good years left. There's some more recent guys. Iman Shumpert, Tim Hardaway. Really liked Shumpert. Was disappointed when they traded him. He actually would fit in well with the young group they have now. Wouldn't mind them getting them back. And Tim Hardaway having another inconsistent year. A lot of injuries, a lot of ups and downs with his jump shot. Don't think I have that rookie of him. He's another guy that was always injured. And this is around that time where they started chasing stars, trying to get stars from other teams. Tony McDice was a superstar, really, for many years with the Nuggets and the Suns. But always had a lot of injuries, and the Knicks traded for him, had even more injuries. I don't even think he played more than like 20 games or so with the Knicks. But really nice card of him there. A couple more here to close it out. Some really nice 94-95 finest. Really love that set. Charles Smith and Patrick Ewing right there. I know they tried to kind of reuse that design in the baseball set last year, but nothing can beat the originals right there. And so that's going to end the basketball. I'll pause right here. I'll be right back with some football.